So, I don't know very much about dominant daddies, uh, as you can imagine. It's been such a long time since I read an obscure smut book for no reason other than to just laugh. I was thinking of what I wanted to do, and for some reason, my heart was drawn to an old fan favorite of the channel, which is prolific author Kitty Jones. For those of you who may not remember, Kitty Jones was the author of hit book Quarantine with the Lumberjack, and she was one of the authors who was the first to make a sex book set during the pandemic, which I think she deserves a pat on the back for. Uh, or a pat on the butt. The book that I decided to read from her catalog is a book that is called Daddy Dom and the Bad Girl. This book is about a girl whose name is Heather and she is a graduate student. Our other main character, his name is Peter. He is a big strong man with much of a personality and much of a girth and he pounds her. So the basis of the book is that they are at a sex club, they meet up with each other, and they strike a deal to have like one night together. I haven't made one of these videos in so long, I think these authors are starting to feel like they can get away with stuff like this, and I'm here to tell them that they can't. Jesus Christ. All right, here we go. So the book opens up with a prologue. This is the story of these two characters meeting and deciding to have their sex I stand in the shadows and watch as the man moves carefully toward his submissive. She's trussed up like a Thanksgiving turkey, only instead of stuffing, she's covered in fabric. Oh, for some reason, I thought it was gonna say instead of being like filled with stuffing, she's filled with like a big like pee pee. He undoes the buttons on her dress and pulls her, her booby out. Then he flicks them. I don't know very much about like nipple play, but he said. This is weird because this man comes up behind her and like grabs her and we don't know why. I move back just a little so that my bottom it rubs against his pee pee. What? I think playing with Peter is a very, very bad idea. It's a dangerous idea, but it's a risk I'm gonna have to take. We don't know why it's a risk. We don't know who this man even freaking is, but we know that he is dominant and he is a daddy. One night, that's all I've agreed to. One night for him to dominate me. One night for him to discipline me. One night for him to punish me because I'm a bad girl. I think what I like most about this character is that she's just so relatable. So chapter one starts with Heather's point of view, and this is her going to Peter's house. Peter Montgomery is not the kind of man you say no to. At least that's what I've been told. From who? And since when did I ever do what I've been told? Wow, she is such a bad girl. I love reading this. We never saw this, but apparently in the scene previously, Peter approached Heather in the sex dungeon and offered her a big sum of cash so they would spend a night together. And she doesn't really know what this night is going to entail, and she's very nervous because he has a reputation of being, like, dominant. Even though he's got a really bad reputation, and even though it's most certain that she's going to get pounded into another dimension, she has accepted his offer because the girl is freaking broke. Good evening, Heather. You're right on time. He cocks his head thoroughly and points to the ground. Why don't you crawl to the living room? So he literally is gonna make this grown woman get on her knees and crawl into the bedroom. She does not miss a beat. She said, I drop to my hands and knees and look up at Peter. Yes, sir, I murmur. I start to crawl forward. Peter puts his foot on the ground and blocks me, keeping me from entering. Oh, Heather, he says. Did you really not read our contract? How are you supposed to dress me tonight, Heather? I gulp. I'm sorry, Daddy. I won't forget again. He swats my bottom as I do. Maybe this is gonna be harder than I thought. And that's the end of chapter one. I crawl to the second door on the right, and like an obedient lapdog, I wait patiently for daddy to arrive. The imagery of like a grown woman crawling across the carpet like a dog is really moving to me. I don't really know why. When I first saw you at the club, I thought you were bratty, he says. Why would I think that? I smirk. Probably because I was teasing. Master Caleb.
Is this book about me? I was teasing Master Caleb when he was punishing his submissive. I just want to set the record straight here. If I did have a submissive, which I promised you I do not, I would not punish them. I stay perfectly still as he circles me. I'm very aware of how dangerous this situation is. Peter is a shark. He is a predator. But I've seen him at the club. He can be gentle too. They're implying that he has like a secret past and that he's secretly longing for a different type of love. Um, but he literally is at a sex dungeon. I want to know why Heather was there. I can understand why he's there because he's like a dominant daddy. Why was she there? She's like a graduate student. Sorry, I can't go to the study group tonight. I have a sex dungeon I gotta go to. So they decide to have a Q&A while she is on the ground and he asks her if she can dance. And so now in front of him with absolutely no shame or sense of irony, she is gonna put on a show for him. I rise standing quickly and trying to look as gracefully as possible. I guess she's on all fours, so she's like this, and then she's standing quickly, but also gracefully, so she's at. I move carefully, making little figure eights with my hips. Then I put my hands on them. So she's like this, she's at. Girl, what the hell are you doing? You're gonna blow it. I mean, she is gonna blow it, but she's gonna blow this too. Peter is the wolf. He is gonna eat me up. So while she's dancing, she says this, which is probably my favorite line in the entire book. I try to make my moves more sultry. I summon my inner Jamie Lee Curtis. All I can imagine is like an Activia commercial, but like sexy. It's for people who wanna feel good inside. Who help get things working the way they should. It's for things in your digestive system. Mm. Mm. Love how you feel for your money back. It's clinically proven to help reduce the time they spend inside you. She said, if Jamie Lee can do it, I can do it. I keep moving. <laughs> this is so inspirational, and honestly, I'm gonna make that my new mantra. While she's dancing, she starts to get wet in her thighs. Um, and that's the end of the chapter. So chapter three starts and it is in Peter's point of view. We find out that he thinks that Heather is very beautiful. We also find out that he has wanted to be with her for as long as he can remember. So let's read. Heather is a beautiful girl and I've wanted her for as long as I can remember. She's in the middle of the living room and she's dancing like there's no tomorrow. It's a little uncomfortable, to be honest. <laughs> so you're telling me that he made her dance and he didn't even like it? He just did it to humiliate her? That's so sad. Anyway, did the dancing turn you on, little one, I ask? I'm not little daddy. She's just so bratty, what can I say? Do you not understand what's going on here? So then he asks her if while she was dancing, she was aroused, and then she says no, and then he reaches into her, and he, I'll, I'll just read it. I slide my hands up the inside of her thigh. She quivers and my hand comes back damp. You told me you weren't aroused, princess. Are you embarrassed? Yes. You never have to be embarrassed, Heather. Not with me. Yes, daddy. The words shoot straight to my- you can tell that Kitty Jones started writing this and she had like basic ideas of what was gonna happen and then she just wrote it all. And then before going back to review it and making sure that things made sense, she just published it. You have a choice to make now. What kind of choice? She raises her eyebrows. Why am I giving her choices? I rarely give my submissive choices in anything. I'm a hardcore daddy. You can take your spanking first or you can let me pamper you. Pamper? Well, you are my little girl, at least for tonight. Doesn't every little girl want to be spoiled? I don't know. Do, do they? What do y'all think? Leave a comment. I've never been pampered, she whispered. Not ever? Not even by your father? I never had one, she tells me. And oh, the sadness in her voice strikes me right in the heart. I'm afraid I may have to take away your choices for the night because something tells me that you could use some pampering in your life. So the following scene is a scene where Heather, who I think is still on the floor at this point, she starts to unpack her trauma because Peter questions her about it. He literally says, why don't we start with your parents? I already told you, she says. 
no dad. Remember? Yeah, girl, it was literally the page before. It was like two paragraphs ago. What about your mom? She did her best. Did she? Not really. I love this dialogue because the way that that was an entire exchange and the longest sentence was four words. Were her boyfriends nice to you? She only dated girls. They were fine. I didn't think that lesbians existed in the Kitty Jones universe, but I'm happy for the representation. Most of my childhood, I just felt like I was in the way. What do you mean? What? What do you mean, what do you mean? She literally just said she felt like I was in the way. So you felt unwanted? It's not a question. She did. So they unpack their trauma a little bit more. There's no relevant details. And then out of nowhere, Peter says, get up, it's time to go. And I thought this was when he was going to, um, like, destroy her um, in a sexual way, maybe in a physical way too. I was just waiting for the ball gag to come out, honestly. But instead, he says that he's gonna go give her a bath. So we're on chapter four now, and Kitty Jones makes sure to drop a few lines describing what a submissive is in case the readers of Daddy Dom and the Bad Girl don't know what that is. Honestly, reading this, I'm actually very excited for my future in uh, submissive. <sighs> Anyways. We have a couple paragraphs where Heather is very embarrassed because she realizes that if he's gonna be giving her a bath, he's gonna like see like her boobies and like maybe even her butt. Your skin is so soft, he murmurs. I moisturize, I blurt out. I think what I liked most about that scene is that it really does illuminate the sort of sassy, submissive, qualities that we have not quite been seeing. Something I like about this book is that Kitty Jones really does have a way with words and the way that she writes characters and character interactions. Um, so I'm gonna read one of these scenes where we really get to know these characters. Do you often take baths at home? No. Why not? I don't have a tub. Like you could at least make them like talk to each other. Why do they talk like that? She's sitting in the bath and he gets like literally a washcloth and he starts like cleaning her body. He presses the washcloth against my skin and moves it up and down across my beep lips. Good girl, he murmurs. Hold on a second. I thought she was bad. This is a recurring thing in many of Kitty Jones' books where characters will have conversations and there will be an entire line of dialogue where somebody just says yes or no. And then you think the conversation is gonna keep going and then it just doesn't. Good girl, yes. You are a good girl. Thank you. Chapter five, Peter. She's about to open up to me. I can feel it. Well, I'm pretty sure based on the last scene where he was scrubbing her lips, um, she was open. He put a wash rag up there. Yeast, yeast, I can smell, is somebody baking bread? <laughs> so then, this is literally, we're so far into this by the way, and I was like, okay, this is where they're gonna get pounded after like the bath. And then he said, okay, so it's time for our tea party. Why are we having a tea party? Because it pleases me. Oh, and that's the end of the entire section of dialogue. So basically he takes her into a room and he pulls out a like puffy, like little kid style, like princess dress. I'm imagining it's like an Elsa dress. All right, I tell Heather. You need to put everything on a tray and bring it out to me. You'll set the tray down and remove the teacups and the treats, and then you'll pour the tea. No spilling, though. I wink at her. Okay, she says. I think I can do this. Chapter six, Heather. What was I thinking? There's no way I can do this. In the world of academia, all I can do is read, write, rinse, and repeat. Seriously, 
My entire life is a series of lectures and papers and research. I have very little time to myself. And when I do, I feel obligated to spend that time studying. Then why is she a frequent face in a sex dungeon? Do we think that Kitty Jones has been to a sex dungeon? I think it's time to start kink shaming. I've tried to keep it pretty low key, but I'm gonna start. Am I the only one who thinks that the like quote unquote kink of like little girl dominant daddy is extremely problematic and very uncomfortable? I guess I do understand maybe some of the appeal of like, no, I don't. To me, I think that age play is very uncomfortable and very like predatory. And even though like they are consenting adults in this book and it is a thing in real life, I think still the notion of dressing up a grown person as a child and making them act like a child and making them do things that are predominantly things that children would do and then using their sort of sexual position as a child to sexually do things to that. It feels very strange and uncomfortable. I'm not calling for Kitty Jones to be deplatformed, um, but I do think that she should lose her platform. While she's getting her tea party ready, she spills the tea. She spilled that tea. She said, oh girl. No, she spilled the tea all over the counter and it's like so embarrassing. So instead of wiping it up and then just like going and serving it to him, she decides to, to throw away everything and run into the bedroom and hide under the bed. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, I would spill my milk at the kitchen table and I would be so embarrassed that I would like literally run away. And it wasn't because anyone yelled at me or like would abuse me, but just because like looking up at my family's faces and like the entire table being covered in milk, it was so humiliating. So I understand how she feels, but also I was like six when I did that and she's like 30. He'll never find me because I'm being perfectly silent but then in the next sentence, he says, Heather, come out from under the bed so we can talk. You have until the count of three to come out from under there or you'll be getting a spanking. Oh no! One, Peter has no idea what I'm going through. I can't believe I spilled the tea. Two, he sighs. Three, instantly I feel him grabbing my ankles and yanking me from out under the bed. I cry and squeal and try to wiggle away. How do you squeal? I didn't like that very much. I'm gonna look up a video of someone squealing because I don't even know what Kitty Jones is getting at here. How to pig squeal. A lot of my friends from school asked me how to do it. Okay. So you're telling me this grown woman in an Elsa dress who spilled tea and decided to run under the bed and hide is crying and squealing like a pig? Honestly, it's kind of relatable. I warned you, little one, he says. Now it's time to climb over my knees. Wait for what? Oh, for the spank. Chapter seven, Peter. You shouldn't hide when you're upset. Were you feeling scared? A little. Did you think I'd be angry with you? Yes. Why? Didn't he like hit her earlier? I'm so confused. You asked me to pour the tea. You didn't ask me to spill it all over your good tablecloth. She sighs. I'm such an idiot. Let's get one thing straight, little one, I tell her. You will never, ever speak like that about yourself ever again. I release her hair. Oh yeah, cause he had her whole hair like literally like grabbed like that while they were talking. I start paddling her bottom. How would you do that? What is a paddle like paddle oh he has a paddle i was thinking he had like like you know when you paddle i thought he was doing like that like on her little butt when i was a kid my parents had a paddle and it was like big and wooden and it had like bible verses on it i go soft at first but then spank her harder and harder until her bottom is red and she is crying and she said <gasps> <laughs> I've liked you for a long time, she says. I never knew. I'm scared of commitment. Aren't we all? What is this dialogue? So chapter seven ends with Peter saying that since Heather is so bratty that when they end up being married that things will never grow boring. 
because it's just so unpredictable. Okay, on to chapter eight. This is in Heather's point of view. She says, please, Daddy Peter, please beep your pretty princess. Uh, let's, let's read it. It's as though a switch is turned on because as soon as I say those words, he grabs me, growls, and tosses me on the bed. He didn't even say anything. It just said he growled. So that means he literally grabbed her, went, eh, and then threw her. And now they're gonna start having sex. Peter kisses me hard and fast. So he was like, So they start doing different activities and she's like, are you going to take my, my Elsa dress off from the tea party? And then he's like, no, because I like to see the Elsa. You, I like to see you in the Elsa dress. Just a few more licks, just a little bit more sucking. Please, daddy, I whisper, slide your big fat. Oh, I'm not going to read that. Fill me up, she says. So that leads us to the epilogue. So the epilogue takes place three months later and it is in Peter's point of view. The submissive in the center of the stage bows her head. Her master circles her slowly. Why, why did these people go to this? So then Peter says that he is going to propose to her at a sex dungeon. She lets out a contented noise. One that shoots straight to my pee pee. Tonight's the night. Tonight's our future. Tonight. The end. So that was Daddy Dom and the Bad Girl by the one and the only Kitty Jones. I'm gonna rate this book on a scale of would I spank or would I not spank? Um, and I would say I would. Just because I think it's funny that she was a grown woman crawling on the floor. I want to like learn how to be like a dominant daddy. Do you know what I'm saying? You've been a real bad, bad audience and you need to be punished. <laughs> he was like, uh. <laughs>